Um, all right. Dear Professor... Oh, we got all the questions here. Everybody's giving me shit. Saying that that fucking guy that said you can't tell a joke at school was trolling me. And it's just like, well, that's one of the most easiest things to do. You know, I don't read. You know, I hang out by myself. I'm, I'm very gullible. And if that makes you feel like a bigger person, if that's the way you get your fun. All right, French runner. Bill, did you see this French cunt at the Olympics? I love French cunts. I'm a part French cunt. Um, he's a marathon runner. Knocked over all the water on the table so no one after him could get a sip. Oh, wow. Wow. I did not see that. That is amazing. Um, sorry, I, just, I was so enamored watching the guy. Wow, he knocked them all down and then just grabbed the... Oh, they're in water bottles. That is amazing. Hey, what's up, buddy? Am I being too loud? Well, I came up to the top of the house, so I wouldn't be loud. Am I saying the bad words? Okay, well, maybe go down. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm almost done here. Can you close the door? I thought I closed the door. Well, there's that conversation. She just walked out on me. Um, that's hilarious. And you know what's great about that? Is there'll now be a new rule saying you can't do that, and it'll be named after him. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, to quote the Tampa Bay Lightning fans, it, Dude, it's legal! <laughs> nothing against it unless the patriots do it then it's fucking cheating that's one of those things if somebody with a patriots logo did that there would be a massive suspension but if anybody else does it it's just like it's a little gamesmanship um i think it's fucking hilarious because there is nothing to say that you can't fucking do that um and I would love to hear his excuse. I was so tired. I was hallucinating. I just reached out, and it took me a second to register that I was touching water bottles, specifically 24 of them in a row. But on the 25th and last one, I realized I was actually touching a water bottle, and it was an illusion, at which point my hand closed, and I was able to pick it up. I apologize. My heart goes out to the other racers. Um, I think that's fucking hilarious. All right, Wendy's story, slander. Hello, Billy Dave's Double Tits. Greetings from Dallas. While I was driving into work, I was listening to your podcast where you're talking about your guilty outing to Wendy. Oh, Wendy's. This is who you're talking about. I thought you said I trashed some woman named Wendy. Wendy? Uh, you planted the idea into my head of what? Going to Wendy's? So that while I worked tirelessly through my morning as an electrical engineer, first of all, can we all just stop and just thank this person? for how brave they are and what a warrior they are, that they're out there making sure people have their lights on and their cable TV so that they can watch the next episode of Down Under. Um, I fantasize about the unhealthy mess of a burger that Wendy's could cook up to clog my art arteries. Come lunchtime, I ditched the salad that I packed and drove to the Wendy's down the road. Oh man, I did this to you? You should have had the salad. Sorry. The first thing I noted that was off with your story was that Wendy's, uh, that the Wendy's that I went to had Coke products on their menu. Pleasant surprise to me. Um, well, the one I went to had a Pepsi. However, I didn't want any of your potential listeners to deter Wendy's from any profits due to the expectation of pe Pepsi products. Granted that this might be a Texas Wendy's versus California Wendy's thing, I took a picture of the menu. Okay, so do I got to match you with the thing? I mean, whatever it was, it tasted like shit. So when it tastes like shit, I think that's a Pepsi. I might have been wrong. Who knows? Who knows? On the subject of the menu, you also complained 
Was I complaining or trying to make you laugh? No, I, I, resent, I resent that word. Okay, I, you know what? I'm not accepting that. All right, I was complaining. You're right. Uh, that it was hard to find the plain burger meals. On the contrary, the classic burgers were literally the number one meal. They weren't on that in fucking L.A. Go fuck yourself. I'm taking a picture of it. Great, now my kid's going to yell at me. You fucking cunt. You fucking self-centered. You're just as fucking self-centered as I am. You went to one Wendy's in the middle of Texas, and then you immediately assume that this is what all fucking Wendy's like. Believe people who went to Wendy's. I am a survivor, and why are you not listening to my fucking story? You're not validating it. Um, on the contrary, the classic burgers were literally the number one meal on the menu. Well, on mine, if you wanted the classic ones, it was just written in like, they had a picture of all their new ones. And on mine, it was just, it was just written. Like it would just say single cheeseburger, double cheeseburger, triple cheeseburger. And it was just all in plain black font that was a subset of a picture of a different burger. Like the... Uh, what the the ostentatious whatever the fuck they call the dumbass burger the son of the the son of the motherfucker burger whatever they call it um on the contrary the classic burger were literally the number one meal on the menu i'm sure this is just the senile old bird talking and complaining how things aren't how they used to be and yelling at kids to stay off his lawn uh no it isn't you just went to a different wendy's okay you live in texas backward ass texas all right? You guys are behind the, the fucking curve. I live in fucking L.A. Let me ask you this. Did it say how much all the calories were? Because that's what mine said. Listen, buddy, it's a corporation. Okay? And in each area, they're going to find different things sell due to the demographic, due to the level of education that's out there in the public schools. All right, you go out to L.A., everybody's on the fucking keto, this diet, this beach diet, and that beach diet, but they know you're still going to go to Wendy's. So what they do is they go, oh, this is, uh, this is bourbon batter. They try to make it seem more fucking healthy. All right, so I think that that's what's going on here before you start questioning my mental stability. I know I can't read, but I, 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 you know, I can fucking read a fast food menu. All right, I'm, I'm going to take a picture of that, buddy. All right, because you know what's funny is you have, I don't see a picture of yours. Uh, menu, at least here. There's a giant question mark. Is that where the picture was and it didn't download? I don't know. Okay, here we go. On the subject of menu, also complain. Okay, wait. Another important note. Listen to this guy. Talk, like He's made an important note. If you had gotten a medium meal instead of a large fat-ass meal, you would have gotten your drink in a cup, in a paper cup, instead of the gigantic dolphin-murdering plastic cup. Oh, is that how it works? All right. Was there, like, nobody in line behind you? In your moment of gluttonous weakness... You fucked over some fish which is going to swim into your giant size Wendy's plastic cup and die when the cup ends up in the ocean. Um, yeah, way more than one fish. It's going to be out there for a thousand years. Uh, now that I ate this double meal, I feel like death and feel that I need to run 20 miles to make up for the supposed 1,500 calories that were in this meal. Oh, so they had the calories listed out there. Um, all right. Well, you know something? You fucking fast food eating cunt. I understand that a lot of that was the grease, the reason why you came at me. And I also understand you breaking my balls. But, dude, I'm telling you. Let me just, let me, I got to look it up now. Here we go. Our fast food chain menus different in, it says in Florida, in the Philippines, in Hawaii. All right, what do I do here? Different, how do you spell difference? Different states. Fast food chains adapt to local taste. Go fuck yourself. There you go, buddy. All right, dumb, dumb. Well, I'm out here in Texas. I can tell you right now, they got the single, they got the double, they got the triple. It's the first fucking one. Yeah, that's because you guys still think the fucking world is flat. They know you're not fucking progressing out there. So they go with their old fucking menu. 
I'm reading the New Testament out here that's got lettuce wrapped horse shit and giant fucking Pepsis. All right? I'll meet you in fucking Arizona. We can look at the Wendy's out there. All right, cancel culture of the past. Hey, Billy Redbeard. By the way, that information came from CNN.com, so, you know, who knows? All right, they're as reliable as the Fox guys. There, I said it to both of them, so now they can fucking shut up. Cancel culture of the past. Hey, Billy Redbeard, longtime listener, first-time writer. Uh, So I was listening to an episode of the podcast where the guest starts talking about cancel culture of the 60s in regards to McCarthyism and the Red Scare. My dumbass thought that was in the 50s. I guess the guy saw a Twilight Zone episode and addressed it. Guy concludes that if cancel culture was here 60 years ago, it's never going away. Do people not realize that this shit has always been here? Um, Yeah, people realize that there's always been people trying to end people's career. But in the past, it was always people with power. You know, they achieved something, they got to a certain level, and then they abused their power. You know, back in the day, the head of a studio could end some nobody's fucking career in a heartbeat. Right? But now the tape, I don't think ever in history, somebody that never accomplished anything nobody's ever heard of can end the career of a multimillionaire who has a fucking house with an infinity pool. I mean, that you got to admit, that's new, right? You know what I mean? And I know that kings have been taken out of power, but like bloodshed happened. If you're going to compare like fucking storming a castle by the serfs or whatever during medieval times to moving your thumbs and hitting send on Twitter, like that's the same thing. Um, I don't know. I think it's pretty amazing type of thing and as always what you see is that rich people are not evil they're just regular people with money that's all it is that whole fucking thing where they try to make oh you know you know white people are evil the blue eyed devil and all that it's like no white people are you with unchecked power when people have unchecked power regardless all of this if women ran the world no them too everybody Everybody with unchecked power, for the most part, you know, it's very rare that you get a Jimmy Carter. Very fucking rare. Somebody that actually has empathy and is a caring human being. And I love to this day that people still like, yeah, but the guy wasn't a good president. It's like, that's because all of those evil sociopaths wouldn't work with the guy. How many presidents? I mean, the guy's, he's out... You know, they all just fucking buy mansions and go to fucking Martha's Vineyard. This guy is like in his 90s. He's still building houses for homeless people. Winning like Nobel Peace Prizes after he was in the White House. I mean, the proof's in the pudding. He's a very rare person, um, unfortunately. And if we just, I think, I believe that if, you know, male, female, gale, gay, gale, gay, straight, whatever, if you could get more people like that in power and have them all working with each other, I think we'd be in a lot better position as opposed to just, you know, looking at ties and the colors of them or whatever. Um, anyway, do people not realize that this shit has always been here? Just in recent memory, everything from McCarthyism targeting, targeting imaginary legions of communists to Anita Bryant trying to get every homosexual working in the public sector fired. Uh, Yes, but she's in a position of power, right? To the satanic panic of the 80s, trying to ban uh, Dungeon and Dragons. Yes, but all this is the difference, though. This is the difference with all of that, is those all were organizations that had power. I mean, the PMRC was Al Gore's wife, Tipper Gore. So he, at that point, was like a fucking, I don't know, what congressman or a senator. They had power. They had a microphone. They had a platform. Nowadays, it can just be like, you know, somebody that cleans a hotel room. And if the person in, staying in the penthouse is a fucking asshole and they get it on video, that guy, lose, him or her, loses their career. That, that This is a whole new phenomenon. And then you combine, you combine that with 
the abuse of that power, which then when the trial is now on the Internet, where there's there's no rules of libel or slander and you can really just say whatever the fuck you want to say, um, which used to be just the world of powerful people with money that they could, you know, they could set the narrative. Now all regular people can do it. Um, no, I think this is like a new thing. And I don't think that like what was happening with Lenny Bruce is the same thing as what's happening to, say, comedians today, where it then goes into their private life. You know, you, you know, you could always get in trouble for shit that you said on stage. Absolutely. But it's just like, you know, he came into the Hooters and, you know, I just felt he was toxic and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden you lose your agent. I'm, no, this is like a whole. Like. I don't know. That's like, only, you know, there's always been music. Sebastian, you know, uh, you know, well, not Sebastian Bach, whatever the fucking real guy, classical music and trying to compare that to, uh, you know, people have always gone to concerts and been a little crazy. People used to go to classical things and then comparing that to people going to like raves and dying and shit like shit is, you know, can progress. That was a bad example. Fuck that. The the music one. I'm just saying. Um, I don't think that we've been like. In a world where uh, made up non events about individuals who are telling shit jokes in strip malls can be the lead stories on late night news that is allegedly news that isn't news. You know, my whole time growing up, I mean, comedians, I, I never saw George Carlin as a lead story. Like, I mean, I, when Richard Pryor, like, lit himself on fire and ran down the fucking street. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, when he fucking was shooting up his cars, I didn't hear it. I mean, I guess I wasn't watching the news back then, but I, I just don't think it's... Uh, I understand what you're saying. If you're, you're basically saying that since um, the beginning of time, people have tried to take out people. Without a doubt, they have. They absolutely have, but like um, this this thing, I don't know. I just I think it is is morphed in. I guess the musical type of thing. It's just like you know, jazz was big, and now rock and roll is big. And you're like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's all music. It's all the same thing. It's like, okay, yeah, I'll go with you on that level. But there's definitely a. Uh, I find it disturbing that people now do what like these 24-hour news networks do where they'll put a headline on a video that's misleading and they'll also edit it in a way where it's just like you literally are like your own news network right now. You are trying to control the narrative of these stories. And the fact that, you know, every single person for the most part has a cell phone with a camera and uh, and video abilities, and then they can upload whatever they shot, uh, you know, and and they decide when they can begin it, when they can end it. I just no, there's never been a time like this. There hasn't been. Um. So I I I, I disagree with what you're saying. Um. I would say there's always been people trying to destroy people, but with the technology that is available now for anybody to do it, I think this is a new level. How about that? How about we agree that there's a new level? Um, Anyway, so there was a congressional hearing where rock stars and rappers had to go before government committees like some trial of Socrates shit to prove that they weren't corrupting the American youth with their damn devil music. This shit never leaves. Yeah, but that's the government. It's always been there. It always will be here. It doesn't ebb and flow. It just changes targets. No, no. Sometimes its target is far enough away from me personally that we can pretend we don't see it happening. Stop saying we. This is your point. Stop acting like everybody agrees with you. Um, I I 100% disagree with you that this cancel culture thing is not some new thing. 
you know, it's, it, it's been ramped up. Like I said, back in the day, you had to get into a position of power and you had to know enough people to control the narrative of, of, of what you wanted to have happen. You had to pay people off. You had to do all of that shit. Um, now, like somebody, you know, in, a, in some ways it's good because, you know, if someone's actually doing something and they are super powerful, it gives people who aren't powerful a voice. That aspect of it is good. But with that power comes the abuse of it. And, um, you know, a lot of the shit that you see out there. So uh, I disagree with what I agree that that people have always been trying to take out people. But back in the day, for the most part, it was it was powerful people doing it. And um, everybody walking down the street didn't have the ability to create their own news story with their own thoughts and their own video and their own like clips. Um, I mean, look at that, look at the fucking clickbait and all of that shit that they have out there that just regular, regular people do that now because they know what plays and they know what they have to say to get people to click on it so they can get click on it so they can get eyeballs so they can get people to advertise. Like, there's never been a time in history where every person walking down the street is thinking like they're running their own TV network. And then you combine that with how most people cannot handle positions of power and you have this shit show that is going on right now. Um, which I think that it's as the, the similar thing from back then was it's always just been a distraction from what's really going on, what you really should be, say, paying attention to. Um, you know, who actually has the money, who really is running things what direction are we really going in? How politicians are all kind of paid off. They're deliberately underpaid, so they owe people favors. That whole fucking horse shit where you can attach all those things to bills. So horrific things get attached to things that people want, and then we don't, have, we don't get a right to vote on a lot of those. All of that bullshit. Uh, I don't know. I disagree with you. I respect your opinion. There you go. Please don't cancel me. All right. Angels of Fenway. Hey, saggy tits. <laughs> I just listened to the latest episode of the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And since you got sentimental about being back in Boston and sitting by the ocean, I thought I'd send you a song recommendation. You probably know this, but in case you don't, check out James Taylor's Angels of Fenway. I don't know this. It would be interesting to hear what you think. I heard you making fun of James Taylor a few times. I make fun. I make fun. Dude, I, there's so much shit I make fun of that I actually like. Okay. You know, I like the Carpenters, but, you know. Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. I'm going to make fun of that song, but I also, and when I hear it, I go back to riding in the back of a station wagon in the 70s. So this part of me that likes it. I like James Taylor. Um, I also like making fun of him. I also like that Blacktop movie that he made. Whatever the fuck it was called, I forget. Um, aren't, so anyway, so you open up a diet fan. So open up a diet fan. <laughs> sit down by the ocean and give it a listen. Love your comedy and podcast. Please keep doing what you're doing. All the best from Germany. Well, that's pretty random. Somebody from Germany would know all of that stuff. Maybe it's a military guy there. You mean one of the troops? One of the heroes? Uh, let's see. Let's listen to James Taylor. Angels of Fenway. I can already tell you right now, I'm already getting uncomfortable just with the name of it. But that has to do with me and my childhood more, more than James Taylor. Angels of Fenway. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Let's see how far into the song I can get. Wait a minute. Did he write this for the rest? Ah, okay, okay, okay. That is the Red Sox version of like those 9-11 songs that all those country guys wrote. You know what I mean? I'm Uncle Sam's gonna put a boot in your ass. <laughs> 
Now, I'm not saying that the person who wrote that song's heart wasn't in the right place, but to, you know, to just sort of capitalize on that. And I know you donated the money to the fucking ambulance drivers and the firefighters and all that shit, but you also got your big mug put right in the middle of the fucking footage. And uh, country music stars responding to the horrors that we saw last week. This is uh, fucking whatever. You know, fucking Colt McRanch face. His fucking terrorism ban. We don't like it. American flag. Yeah. Sing it with me. Put down your fried dough and sing it with me. Um, sorry. You know, that tragedy, it happened to all of us, and everybody has a right to react. You can be silent. You can use your voice. You can be creative. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to cry. Whenever I hear people say stuff like that, I just think to them, like, how fucked up are you? That's the question I want to ask. On a scale of 1 to 10, emotionally, how fucked up are you that you feel that you need to take care of the world and your ego is telling you that you have the ability to do it? What happened to you? How much were you beaten down as a child that your ego now tells you, like, I need to speak on this. I need to say something. And when I say something, I'm going to say something that's already been said. And I'll just combine it. Be brave. Be courageous. Be original. Not really. Just say the things that you say. Thoughts and prayers with the families during this difficult time. People, if you need help, know that there's help out there. I love people have, there's literally sound bites to say when somebody kills themselves, when there's a tragedy. You know, it's like you didn't even take enough time to write something original. A stitch in time saves nine. Hold your children a little closer tonight. (laughs) It's just like, you're going with stock lines. What what about this tragedy said to you that it wasn't unique enough or painful enough for you to come up with something original? Oh! I'm being a douche this week. All right, everybody. Um, That is the podcast. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday. I'm going to fucking hang out and uh, watch the fucking Yankees and Red Sox. They got a doubleheader tomorrow. And... um, and then he got Wednesday. Oh, and I got a big special guest for the uh, Thursday afternoon just before Friday Monday morning podcast. That in show business is known as a effing. Oh, Jesus. That's why I said effing. Wait. It's known as a teaser. All right. That's the podcast, everybody. All right. Stay safe. Help each other. Pour some ice over your head. Do the things that you need to do that you'd want to be done to others if they were you while you were being brave and, you know, looking up at the sky and just being present. Okay, I'll see you.